In the early 20th century, the Russian mathematician Andrei Andreevich Martikov analyzed poetry using mathematics. To do so, he invented a powerful approach now called a Markov chain. For some reason, Markov focused on Russian words. This was a little peculiar because most of the Russian upper class spoke German. But let's use words from a more familiar language. Suppose you know that one letter of an English word is A. What's the next letter? While we can't say for certain, some letters are less likely to follow. Q or J, for example. But some letters are more likely to follow. E or N. We can consider the letters of a text as a sequence. Suppose the terms of the sequence could be any of n different symbols. If we knew the kth term, we could give a probability that the k plus first term is one of the n symbols. For example, suppose a signal device produces x's and y's, one symbol being produced each second. If 40% of the time an x is followed by an x, and 90% of the time a y is followed by another y, find the probability that an x or y is followed by an x or y. So we'll designate x as symbol 1 and y as symbol 2. The probability that an x is followed by an x is 40%. So the probability that an x is followed by a y is 60%. Similarly, the probability that a y is followed by a y is 90%, and the probability that a y is followed by an x is 10%. Now, if the terms of the sequence can be and become any one of n possible symbols, there are n times n probabilities. So we can organize these into an n by n stochastic matrix. But we need to make an important decision. Which way to run the probabilities? Human nature being what it is, we think more easily about the probability of what will be based on what currently is. So it's natural to represent these probabilities as the entries p, i, j of a matrix where pij is the probability that symbol i will be followed by symbol j. This gives us a right stochastic matrix. So going back to our example, let's find the right stochastic matrix. So if x is symbol 1 and y is symbol 2, then we found the probability that a x, symbol 1, is followed by an x, also symbol 1, is 0.4. And the probability that symbol 2y is followed by y is given as 0.9. Then we determined that the probability that x is followed by y is 60%, that's 0 0.6. And the probability that y is followed by x is 10%, 0 0.1. And so these are the probabilities, and they are the entries in our right stochastic matrix. While it's natural to describe the probabilities this way, probabilities really only make sense when dealing with large numbers. Suppose we have vi symbols of each type at t equals k. Then at t equals k plus 1, we have vi prime of each type. And so there's a transformation from the vector whose components are the number of symbols of each type at t equals k to the vector whose components are the number of each type of symbol at t equals k plus 1. And this leads to the transition matrix. So remember, a matrix represents a linear transformation. So once again, we'll have our signaling device. Letting x be symbol 1 and y symbol 2 Suppose we have v1 x's and v2 y's at t equals k. So we want to find formulas that will tell us how many x's and y's we have at t equals k plus 1. So it's useful to remember, it's easier to know where you're from than where you're going. 
So the x's at t equals k plus 1 came from either the 40% of x's at t equals k that were followed by x, or the 10% of the y's at t equals k that were followed by x. And similarly, the y's at t equals k plus 1 came from the 60% of the x's at t equals k that were followed by y, or the 90% of the y's at t equals k that were followed by y. And the coefficients of our formulas become the entries in our transition matrix. Now notice that our right stochastic matrix was, while our transition matrix was the transpose. If we view matrices as representing linear transformations, and we should, then we'll want to use the transition matrix. Now, while we could define the transition matrix as the transpose of the right stochastic matrix, let's see if we can generate it directly. Consider any entry a, i, j in the transition matrix. Since this is the transpose of the right stochastic matrix, a, i, j equals p, j, i. And this is the probability p that symbol j at t equals k becomes symbol i at t equals k plus 1. Consequently, we can define the transition matrix for a Markov chain as an n by n matrix, where a i j is the probability that symbol i at t equals k plus 1 was symbol j at t equals k. You can view this as the probability of becoming i if you started at j. Now, it's important to note that we have chosen to use the transpose of the right stochastic matrix. This is a convention. We agree to it, though there's no reason we had to. Some people, mostly in computer science, use the right stochastic matrix directly. So if you're reading up on Markov chains, be sure to check which convention is being used. 